Good evening, everybody. <clears throat> My name is Vinny, Mr. Fixit, and today I'm bringing to you a Kia Stinger UVO or UVO head unit. This one is from a 2018 Stinger, uh, the US model, I believe, so no UVO Plus with cellular connectivity. Um, I bought this as a replacement. My 2020 Kia Stinger had the radio go bad. It seems like the Android operating system dropped the firmware. And just in case they didn't cover it under warranty, which they did, I wanted to have a backup uh, that I could install myself. Seeing as I covered it under warranty, I have this, and I thought, why not take it apart and take some pictures uh, so that everyone could see what's inside. And maybe somebody with a Canadian or um, or Australian model or one of the other models that have Evo Plus with cellular connectivity, maybe they can do the same, and we can compare what they look like. Um, I've already taken the screws off and kind of looked inside, so um, I know what to expect. Um, I'm not too big into the electronics, so I will take some high-quality pictures and post them. Maybe somebody will be able to figure out um, things that are missing. I'm assuming that, that the cellular, cellular uh, excuse me, I'm assuming that the cellular modem is just not installed. So that was my main reason for opening it was to see the possibility of if the modem was installed, if we could install it, things like that, or just anything else. Um, I was hoping to find a way to program the firmware myself, seeing as all of these buttons are, other than the reset button, are hardware buttons. Uh, I'm sorry, are software buttons. So none of them are able to register with the Android to bring it into recovery mode. That was my main, uh, one of the main reasons for opening it up. I wanted to see if I could boot into recovery mode using the USB jack in the car and re-upload uh, the firmware. I tried all different types of combinations. Normally on an Android phone, it's the volume up in the menu button or the volume up in the power button when you reset, and I couldn't figure out um, which ones I want, uh, would work. So uh, I wanted to take it apart and see, and first we'll take a look at the outside. So as you can see, you've got your default uh, buttons, uh, your passenger airbag lights, your tuner, volume knob. On the underside, the two things I did notice, now I haven't taken one of these out of a vehicle, so I don't know if these are hooked up. I'm assuming these are test ports or programming ports, and one of these, I'm imagining if you short these pins some, in some way or the other, you'll be able to uh, boot into recovery mode. See if I can brighten that up a little for you. Um, we'll take a look at that from the actual underside of the circuit board. Um, let me adjust the camera here. You can see we've got Kia Hyundai. The other company, Mobis, uh, is who I believe designed or makes the board. And I'll take this top cover off for you. Mm -hmm. See if any of these mean anything to anybody. And I'll also post pictures of all these or link them. So we've got model numbers, hardware versions. This should be maybe different in UK, Australia, Japan. Um, the FCC ID, which I'm going to look up next. And that should give us... Some type of maybe diagram. Um, in the past, I've looked up things using the FCC ID, and they have quite a bit of information there that's public, uh, publicly accessible. And then you know your standard FCC uh, warning or, or FCC note. So Hyundai, Mobis. I'm not sure what Mobis is. Let me take our little back plate. So the first um, thing you'll notice is this is two layers. If you look in there, you can see this board connects on two different parts to the secondary board. So we'll go ahead and separate those two. I've already removed the screws, and we'll take a look at the top board first. So again, we see Hyundai Mobis, and this little, well, we can see, we have one, um, maybe a uh, antenna or some type of receiver. It's usually, they're usually grounded in big, uh, in metal cases, helps keep interference out, and you can see it's got these big uh, pins holding it to the motherboard, and they're soldered in on the backside, twisted and soldered in. And you can see the same type of uh, pre-drilled or pre-cut holes uh, where something would be soldered, and nothing is there. So this one, I'm assuming, is the satellite radio. Um, I saw something that made me think that, and I forget what it was. Well, actually, it says audio travel link. Um, so I'm not sure. That could be Bluetooth. Um, satellite might be something different in the car. It might not even be installed in this model. I'm not sure what this car had. It could be Bluetooth, now that, I, now that I think about it. But that's another thing I can look up, the hardware ID, and see. And any of this information I'll post. And again, here's the unpopulated board. And we can see all different, all these different numbers, IDs, and all of these unpopulated um, parts of the pads, I should say. So it looks as if, yeah, this whole half of the board is unpopulated, all of this. So I'm assuming that's either for satellite, if that wasn't included, or possibly cellular connectivity. I mean, there's all sorts of stuff missing. There's no resistors or capacitors or anything. I'm sure somebody just by the shape of those, and um, I don't even remember, coils or, I used to know some of this, but somebody will be able to tell exactly what all these are. And it would be quite the chore to fill that all in, because even then, you would probably need different firmware, or the firmware for the UK unit, or Australian, Canadian, whoever has it. And there's the board number. We can see it says basic mod. I'm, I'm wondering if that means basic model, and that's a 2015 board. Um, seeing as the Stinger came out in 2018, I'm curious what these would also share this board. So that's quite interesting. Um, unless they developed and created the infotainment system that far in advance, uh, I highly doubt that. But it's a possibility. These things do take time. So we can see this board. Uh, the underside of this seems a little more populated. We've got uh, some capacitors and resistors, all SMD. And here we have the headers coming through. It's very interesting to see. I'm going to attempt to lift this lid off, and I will come back. All right, and my suspicions were correct. As you can read there, Sirius XM. So this is the XM radio module. I'm going to assume that is the XM radio connector as well as an antenna. 
Um, so that's how that's what we have there. And we'll move on. I'm guessing if I look up this hardware ID, we'll see it's an XM radio module of some sort, mobile or otherwise. Just snap that back in place. And we'll move on to the secondary board. The secondary board, as you can see, is the interface for the buttons. And we've got a lot more going on here, as well as the majority of our main interface. Now, I'm sure somebody with any knowledge of automotive radios will be able to tell you exactly what all of these are. I believe we have an antenna connector here and here, possibly auxiliary. That's what this, I think maybe one of these is auxiliary um, for our aux input. Another one of these is going to be USB. I'm going to guess it's this one here. Just based off the design of the pins, it's very similar to USB. Um, not that that matters since it's a non-standard interface, but USB typically has four pins, uh, positive and negative, as well as a positive and negative data pin as well. Um, and then we have a USB interface in our car, so that would make sense. We also have another four pin connector here. Just get focus, focus. There we go. This is a secondary four pin. Um, we have steering wheel controls, that could be that. And then we have this multi pin interface here. So I'm not quite sure. We have all the different settings for the vehicle, so that could be in here. You have your uh, different drive mode settings, all that stuff as well. It all gets interfaced through the Android application. We have these as well, I didn't see. Um, yeah, so maybe we have a friendly Kia engineer that might be able to tell. So if you are doing this, be very careful when removing this. When you remove all the screws, there is some thermal paste or thermal tape. And we'll see when I lift this. You can see it right in the back there, that gray block. So I'm guessing that's a, uh, what do they call that, a DAC, digital audio converter. Um, but I'll show you that up close. That is this Telechips. So go ahead and look that up. And here's one of the interface pins we could see through the bottom. There's the other one. And we've got quite a lot going on here. This board is mostly populated. And again, I'll post as many high resolution pictures as I can, or I'll try and make as few as I can. Uh, well, hitting on just about everything. But again, we see Hyundai Mobis. Here's some of the other pins here, or some of the other uh, chips. What is this one? That one's got a little symbol on it. We've got another uh, shielded type thing. Um, that one I'm going to think maybe is Bluetooth. I've got that I'm thinking that's no lead. That's pretty interesting. And is that? Sorry, I was just looking. I was curious if that was an adjustable potentiometer there. Doesn't seem to be. Someone will have the answers to all this, and hopefully they can either put it in the comments or otherwise. This looks to be, um, it looks like a memory a memory chip. I don't see. It's like they wrote over, there's text over text. It looks similar in size to other memory chips I've seen in the past. Uh, I could be completely wrong. But there we have it. Let's see the back side. And we can see all our different interface connectors. How they're soldered in place. This is the only one, these here, that seem unpopulated. And those go to these different sides of the interface. It looks like we're part of it. So there, there we have it. Um, here's our interface for the buttons, it seems, and the display. And that clips right in here. Yeah, so I'll, that'll be it. I'll post uh, pictures in the comments or uh, if I, for Facebook on YouTube. I'll try and link them on Tiny Picker or something like that and post it in the description. I hope that helps some people out and maybe um, we'll be able to, to learn a little bit about the head unit from this. Um, maybe add some more features that, that we don't quite get in the U.S. or otherwise. Um, or maybe we can learn to repair our own head units. I know other people have had issues with firmware dropping or audio, different types of things. Um, so maybe this can we can help with our, our repairing our own things, especially for people that may be out of warranty. Um, so I'll, next, I'll, I'll take this off. Um, I'll just take some pictures of that. And one of the other things I got, I got a separate panel. It was only a few bucks. Um, I figured if I got an exhaust with the uh, adjustable valves, having a spare one of these, I can put it um, right next to that in a stock location. So we'll see how that goes. Thanks for watching, everybody. Um, if you want more of this, like and subscribe and uh, click the little bell icon and I'll try and upload more regularly and all different kinds of content, including teardowns, um, any type of instructionals, or, or just you know, showing off the car. If you have any specifics you'd like, mention it in the comments below and, and I'll uh, try and do what I can in my spare time. Uh, I like to take things apart and tinker with them and hopefully uh, help some people out in the process. Thanks again, everyone, for watching. Have a great day.
And there you have it. We hook that together. All right, I removed the button assembly and I found something interesting. And what that is, is on the left side, oh, sorry, on the left side, if we look around back, we have another shielded module and that says BTR, which I want to say is Bluetooth receiver, which would make sense that you put it in the front of the vehicle so that you didn't have to run any other antenna around. And here's a little overview of that back of that module and I'll kind of try to show some of it. It says LCD, which is interesting. You have some possibly unpopulated pins and here's the model of this chip. This is 2016, which is interesting. It's got a newer date than the rest. And here, in this interface pin, close to this Bluetooth chip, or su suspected Bluetooth chip, was this module that you could see from the back that came through this whole, or this interface pin. So I'm wondering if that's the interface for the Bluetooth. Um, here's the back of that one. And that just sat right here. It was covered by this um, beauty plate. So that is this. I will go ahead and take this apart and show you the front side. Unfortunately, unfortunately, the board is being retained somehow and I'm not able to get to the other side, um, so I won't be able to do that for you. And put everything back together. interface board back together. Put the interface clip in. Get out of here. Nice and clipped in. And that was just resting. Was able to get the airbags sign off, and you can see the little LEDs for the airbag. And here's your reset switch. All our buttons work great. Clip this back in. Should get a nice audible click. There we go. Let's move on to the rest of it. I'll see if I can get a better view. All oh, right. I think this is a little bit of a better view. Right, put one screw in the middle as a retainer. And let's go ahead with the rest. portion. And we have to align these two clips for 
connectors. Looks as if we've got them. Right. We've got some little standoffs that let us know we are in the right spot. Appears on the top section. Oh, we forgot one screw. We have our back cover. Thank you, Kia Hyundai, for using one size for the most part for each item.